Austin Peterson and Landon Mance are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to this episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. This is Austin Peterson. I'm here with my co-host, as always, Landon Mance. And today we're excited to have in studio Cassidy Hazelton with Hired Hard Hats. Cassidy, thank you, and uh, thank you for being here. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so... Uh, couldn't think of anything better to do in the dog days of summer than to be on a podcast with us, huh? No, this is awesome. I'm I'm a, I'm enjoying this experience, and thanks for having me, for sure. Yeah. So we always like to start by having our guests tell us a little bit about themselves on the personal side, you know, family life, where you grew up, that sort of thing. If you don't mind, just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I'm uh, my Arizona native. I was born and raised here in Arizona. Um, my family has actually been in the construction industry for four generations, and so I'm in fourth um, in line, and my family still remains in the industry today. And um, I originally went to school for um, medical assisting, and I realized early on um, that I thought that was the industry that I wanted to be in, but I realized I had a real good business savvy, kind of street smart um, outlook, and I was really itching to start a business, and so um, that's kind of what brings me here today. And um, I'm 36, and um, I really feel that uh, Arizona is the place for me to to start this business and and really launch from here. And um, in addition to hire hard hats and hard hats, my birthday was also on Labor Day. So, I mean, you can't really get more ironic than that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, in addition, I just, I, I think, um, it, you know, this whole experience has been great and I have a lot of support. My family is um, very supportive on, on my venture and, and my startup. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think that's exciting and you're absolutely right from an economy standpoint, whether it's construction or otherwise, the Phoenix market is fantastic, right? And, and it's yeah. a great place to to start a business, it's a great place to build a business, a great place to raise a family. So uh, I, I think you made the right decision, obviously. I mean, met, no uh, no knock on medical assisting, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, it sounds like you made the right decision for you and, and uh, for your future. Right. And I, and I definitely felt the pressure early on to kind of make that decision um, early out of high school. But I've always had this very bold personality and um, very creative ways of thinking. Uh, and so early in my er early 30s, I realized that I wanted to start a business. And once I basically got um, hard hats in my hand, I thought, wow, I'm really good at this. I'm going to stick with it. And so far, it's been great. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I, I think that's exciting. I mean, <clears throat> so my personal background, I actually also grew up in a construction family. My My father is a stucco contractor. I have an uncle that was a stucco contractor. Um, my brother's a heating and air contractor. So it, it runs deep in my family. I'm kind of the black sheep that decided to go, you know, white collar if we if we can still call it that. Um, but I've always, I'm, I'm always real kind of drawn to that blue collar side of things. A good portion of my clients personally are, are owners of blue collar businesses mm -hmm. um, because I think they, I think they get it. Right. I mean, and I think a lot of times that blue collar business owners are viewed as just guys who know how to work on stuff or gals who know how to work on stuff. And so they decided they would start this little business. But you've taken a different spin on, you know, hired hard hats and what you're doing here. So mm -hmm. I want to have you go into that. But, you know, you talked about four generations, long, long time. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a number of years that about that 70. Okay. It's been about 70 years. Um, just, uh, I guess, a little rundown of that. My uh, grandfather worked in the union. He was with uh, Stunt con Sunk Construction. Um, and my uncle also worked for the union. And then my dad, he has worked for several contractors and construction companies here in Arizona and some others across the state. And um, he used to be in uh, equipment rentals. And that's kind of how this all happened, but um, because he had a lot of customers and he leased and sold out equipment. He was a, a manager in, for uh, Red Mountain Rentals. And uh, so he knew the frustrations in the industry with some of his customers not being able to find quality. 
And so that then was given to me. Um, and so my dad is actually uh, working down at SWP Contracting down at the border. Um, he's doing the highways right now. Uh, so it's it's really cool and and uh, to see how um, he still is very involved. And ironically, the company that he works for, um, the guy who sold it, his name is Bobby Law, is actually my investor. So he snagged me, <laughs> and he snagged my dad at the same time when his company went out of business um, that he was working for. So, yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of support um, from the Arizona industry for sure. Yeah, no, that's that's really yeah. cool to see and to hear and. An opportunity to work with your dad is always a good thing as well. Yeah, it's it's a interesting mentorship, and you know, because I am his daughter, and um, you know, he wants me to do well. He knows the ins and outs of sales and how you know you need to be successful in, in selling a product. So, and and now I'm dealing with his customers, and so when I talk to him um, about a customer I spoke to or even a worker, they're like, "Hey, I know your dad." And I'm like, of course, you know, my dad. And so um, if, if I'm maybe having a challenge with a customer about, you know, um, selling, perhaps, let's say, for example, you know, he really hits me hard on, you know, these are the things you need to work on and say. So he's constantly mentoring me um, in this industry, for sure. So it's, it's a great synergy. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. That's awesome. And that chuckle tells me that sometimes he can be a little overbearing. But, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I said it, you didn't. So your, your dad can blame that on me. Yeah, he uh, he's he's we're a lot alike in nature. I realized over time um, he's basically my co-founder. Um, I, I really get a lot of insight from him. And we we did butt heads a lot um, early on in the beginning, but um, I realized that I value his opinion so much, and that he's actually on the executive um, administrative advisor role because he just oversees. I ask him everything, even I'm like, "What's that piece of equipment? You know, what does it do? How long does it? You know?" And so it's yeah, he's always there for me anytime I need it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I hope in the future my kids speak as highly of me as as yours do, <laughs> or as you do your dad. <laughs> Yeah, he drives me nuts sometimes. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. So, you know, grew up in a construction family, long long history of construction, of course, but what what would you say specifically makes you qualified for what you're doing now? Right. So, I would say because of my family, I definitely have the qualifications for understanding the problems. I mean, kind of being grandfathered into um, this industry is really important for most professionals and any business that is ran um, in construction. They want to know that they can trust you, and, and it's, it's really hard to get your foot in the door. And so that alone um, gives me an advantage, but also um, makes me qualified because I'm constantly educated between either him or my significant other. And even when I'm dealing with professionals that are looking for jobs or construction workers, uh, they all know my dad. So they all become kind of like my second dad. And they're, they're telling me, um, you know, yeah, this, this, and that. And so it's, I'm, I'm so well aware and probably overly educated in this industry. Um, and I, and I get to see it firsthand with my significant other, um, who's a superintendent and works for a big company called Hellas Construction. And that's how actually Hard Hats was built because I was listening to him during this storm that hit, which I'll go into, but if it wasn't for me being surrounded about the industry and the problems that it's facing, I wouldn't be able to problem solve my way in, into what I'm building right now. So, yeah. very unique. So, we didn't talk about talking about this ahead of time, but I, I have to ask, I mean, a female in the construction industry, specifically hard hat type construction industry, is still abnormal, right, nowadays. And so you want to talk a little bit about the advantages or disadvantages of being a female in, in this industry? Right. Um, so being a woman in business in general always has its challenges. Um, being a minority, we can categorize it as that. Um, and now I am going full-fledged in probably one of the toughest, most male-dominated industry as a woman, solving probably the biggest problem that the industry faces right now is quite honestly, and not to toot my own horn, but that is pretty dang bold. Um, and uh, so far, I haven't felt like anyone's trying to hold me back. And, and if they do, I, 
I usually go running through the doors anyway. There's usually, and, and if they do, it just makes me work harder. And uh, that doubt, that small piece of doubt, I'm, I actually enjoy it because it then keeps me in that direction of what I need to do. Because if someone's not, you know, doing that, then, then you know that maybe you're, what do they say? Like, as far as people hating on you a little bit, you know, you're doing something right. In other words, but overall, um, I have great support, but we are often kind of, uh, dissected, I feel like, and, um, look, looked at like a new species sometimes. Like what is this nature, this freak of nature coming into our world (laughs) and we must dissect her, (laughs) you know? So, um, that's about some of the challenges that I feel as a founder, but people are really rooting for me. Yeah. Um, in the problem that I'm solving. Yeah, no, I think I think you're obviously solving a huge problem, and we'll go into that a little yeah. bit more. And you know, for those of us who think that it's just Cassidy and I, because we could talk all day long, I, I feel like <laughs> right. you know we could just have this conversation all day long. I'm gonna introduce Land and let him talk a little bit about uh, some things on his mind, what he wants to ask you. Yeah, <clears throat> really excited to have you in here. Um, so, I I'm a really curious person, and I think that that is a uh, trait amongst all entrepreneurs. Um, you seem to have that as a heightened trait, which I think is really cool because just listening to your story, saying that you uh, were listening to your significant other go through some kind of an issue which piqued your curiosity, which led into you uh, starting up what you call kind of your your venture. So walk us through that that process and the evolution of how it came about and tell us about what it is exactly that you uh, are doing right now in your company. Yeah. So the evolution of hard hats and where I came at with this idea um, originally resonated from when my dad and I were having a conversation about some of the problems that his customers were having. I then kind of started this little social job board geared towards people in construction um, for um, employees and employers to connect nationally. And it's kind of had this LinkedIn vibe, but I realized it wasn't, it wasn't providing the solutions that I knew that I could do. I, I knew that there was something else there during that time of working on that business. I was approached by an accelerator um, named Coplex who takes industry experts and solves big industry problems. Uh, So I was really, uh, once that was introduced to me, I, I couldn't help myself. I ran wild. I put a deck together. I doodled in this little industrious woman's book, and I was writing down all my ideas. I still have it. And um, from there, I pitched my idea to one investor, and that was it. It was like, boom, I here I am starting this startup, and like it's been an incredible ride. So during that time of figuring out, you know, what is Hard Hats going to do? How are we going to find these solutions? And in the in the beginning, I had some basic solutions, and then one day um, last year, sometime a huge storm hit during the monsoon season, and uh, my significant's traveling with his crew, and I hear him on the phone, really stressing to his guys, "I can't lose you." You know, we, we need to keep our crew together. But guess what? These guys don't get paid when a storm hits and downtime occurs. They're completely unpaid. I mean, how frustrating is that for anyone who has a family to take care of? And then they have no income. And so I'm listening to him and I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is it. Like, he just lost two guys out of his crew. What can I do to take those two guys and funnel them back into the workforce, really? How can we create a marketplace and, and bring people in this industry, continue to keep them in the industry temporarily or find them new employment when companies are in dire need of manpower. And so really, I'm, that's really what Hard Hats is um, surrounded by is the, the pain problems, the frustrations that the industry is really going through, which I don't think anyone's really done. You know, they put up these platforms and they're like, here's these jobs. But really what makes, what makes it different is, is that we're really working this around both contractor and worker so that we can adapt to their needs versus what we need to do. Um, I think that that is huge, but hard hats, um, so far is doing great with, um, serving the industry. We're still very early on, but just the other day we matched an entire crew and it happened so fast. And I thought, 
if we're able to take entire crews on a job that just started and, and bring them to an employer and, and get them onboarded, I mean, that, that alone can bring serious relief to any contractor in, in the United States. So, yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine that uh, that would save them a tremendous amount of time. Now, let me let me take one step back and, sure. and, and just say that I I can hardly hammer a nail into uh, into the wall to hang a picture. So I, I wouldn't know the first thing about hiring a crew to do a job. But I, I would imagine that for you to be able to place a team um, like that, uh, that effectively and efficiently, I would assume that would be a huge game changer and a time saver for your clients yeah it, it's really uh an opportunity for most companies to see that we're targeting people um when they're in dire need of income or a job be due to any reason of downtime and there's several reasons when this downtime occurs it's not just weather um but if we can hit heavy on both sides of both demand and supply mm -hmm. In this industry, um, I think that will satisfy both um, people in this industry and, and keep people curious about um, the other opportunities that we can provide them, um, even if it's a career. Yeah. And, and yeah. And so we're doing a really good job at um, attracting people that have absolutely no experience in construction. So I'm really anxious to see what I could do with that, too. Yeah, definitely. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your brand and your logo. Uh, I think it's it's fair to say it's a little bit different than some of the uh, the others out there. So tell us kind of how that came about. Yeah, so I went through a branding workshop with Coplex uh, when I first started with them, and of course we kind of did an exercise in figuring out which one was settling with me, which one felt right for the industry, what was going to be different, what was going to be youthful um, and attractive to people that typically don't consider construction as a career or even a, you know, um, a job in this industry. So it was really important for me to, to look at um, what could one logo do for everything that this industry needs. And so the little... A uh, yellow hard hat obviously represents a hard hat, and we change those colors uh, to kind of represent certain times of the year or certain events that are going on. I think that's really fun. But also, um, you know, there, without going, you know, too much into this, you know, there's a lot of mental health in this industry too. So I really felt like this, this smile. You know, I, I, I thought it would be really cool to, sh you know, show into our logo that. This is a great industry. There, there are people who can take care of you, and, and you can be happy in this industry because not a lot of people see it like that. They see dirt, shovel, you know, hard work, and, and it's, it's not just that. And so I really wanted to bring that um, culture into this industry. Yeah, no, I <clears throat> excuse me. I think that there is a lot of misunderstanding of, of what the blue collar industries are, are about and we actually had a guest on the very first guest actually that we had on this podcast that that talks about this and so i want to i want to explore that a little bit but let's take a quick break to hear a word from one of our sponsors and then we'll come back and talk about that at paylocity we deliver more than our awesome product suite with crazy good reviews we prioritize your success by covering you with a deep support system to back up our easy to use, innovative HR solutions. Everything we do is designed to support you in reaching your goals. Together, we tackle your day-to-day -day work so that you can spend more time building the culture you and your employees crave. For professionals who crave true partnership, Paylocity is the HR and payroll company that frees you from the tasks of today, so together we can spend more time focused on the promise of tomorrow. Let's go forward together. All right, we're back with Cassidy Hazelton with Higher Hard Hats. And, and just before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, the construction industry in general or blue collar and the way that it's kind of viewed. And I mentioned that we had a guest on oh, a couple months ago, um, and he put a book out. His name's Josh Zolan. He put a book out called Blue is the New White. And somebody that you should definitely get to get to know. If you don't uh, know him personally, I'm happy to make that connection. But um, you know, he believes that there's going to be, and there continues to be. And you've you've uh, talked about this a little bit, and will a bit in a, in a minute about uh, 
this shortage of labor, right? And it's, it's that we've had this kind of shift in our educational system that kind of pushes everybody to feel like they need to go to college in order to be successful in, in life. And some people, college is the right direction, and some people it's not. Sometimes it's a technical college. Sometimes it's just on-the-job training as an apprenticeship, for, you know, plumbing or whatever it may be um, to learn. And so I, I think it's interesting and unique that, that you're targeting in on that or honing in on that. And so I guess my question would be, are you doing anything with partnerships or, you know, that – that can get to people younger and have people start to get interested in this? You know, what does the future look like, I guess, for, for higher hard hats? Right. So we've absolutely made partnerships. And uh, in addition to uh, job boards, but also uh, training programs, vocational training, like Heavy Equipment Colleges of America was our first partner. Uh, Zip Recruiter being one. Empire Cat is one that we're working on right now. The Arizona Department of Transportation. Um, eBacon, Tag Employer Services, and I know I'm probably forgetting one in there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I of course would love more on top of that as far as like education. But what Hard Hats is doing to kind of bring this new fresh uh, feel and and people in this industry is really uh, drawing in a new energy with the startup um, opportunity and, and internships that. Hard, cat, hard hats can um, then bring in college students to get them educated on startups, but also construction. So I've done a really good job at turning one of my current um, interns, who's now our COO, Chief Operating Officer, who knew nothing about construction, really didn't care much about it, and, and just knew a little bit about it. And now she's obsessed because now she sees this opportunity. Her name is Mukta, she's great, she's super smart. She's not even 21 yet. And now she has an internship at Qit. Hmm. And now I, I have a meeting with Qit. And because of this opportunity that she's had, she sees that this is a market, this is an industry that is actually pretty cool. And so we're always making those opportunities available for college students, which I've had interns since I've started. Um, I really want to be able to uh, partner or even come up with some type of uh, construction management apprenticeship or some something uh, workshop for people that we're now seeing leaving other industries to come to this industry. And I really don't know what to do with them because a lot of employers are like, we need some type of background. I mean, we're seeing professors. We're seeing every everything else but construction right now because of what's happening. I need to be able to do something with them and now. And so it would be great to have someone reach out, um, collaborate, and, and see how we can um, educate for free to funnel some of these potential people into the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that uh, a place like EVIT, right? E right. East Valley Institute of Technology, they'd be interested in something like that. And yeah, I, I, I think that you're right. I mean, it's, it's really, uh, well, I mean, I've got a daughter that's 17, about to go to college in a year, right? So one more year of high school, and I've got another, I've got another son that's in college. And I think that too often they don't have, they don't really know what it is that they want to do, mm -hmm. right, when they finish high school. And so they think I'm interested in something, or I'm going to go and do my generals, you know, first, but colleges aren't really put together that way now. They want you to choose something right, right. out of the gates, and so I almost feel like if there was something in that summer between high school and college, for example, or each summer, their sophomore or junior years, to go and do some sort of an apprenticeship or internship in these different areas of the economy, mm -hmm. that they might find something that they're interested in that they would have never thought that they would be interested in. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and I actually didn't really tap too much on, on the, the colleges, you know, putting a lot of pressure on people today. And we're probably going to see a little bit of change in that with what everything that's going on and, and not not sure about what the future holds for a lot of people that were considering college or, or are in it right now. And so, you know, I'm kind of raising my hand like let's do something and let's do something fast um, so we can give some opportunities to people who may have to pivot out of into a different, you know, industry that they were considering. And... Um, I, I don't I don't think that college is for everyone. College wasn't for me. I am a street smarts girl. I like to teach myself stuff and I like to be out there and, and, and you can absolutely do it. There's a lot of opportunities out there for 
um, people to be educated on business startups and and wow, there any any entrepreneur opportunity, people are always willing there to help you, and for free. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you you mentioned that uh, you're seeing the, the this inflow of uh, people into the industry that maybe weren't you typically didn't see in the past due to the um, circumstances that we are all living in these days. So can you spend a couple minutes and just speak to that? I, I assume that um, you've got your uh, you've got your hand very uh, uh, pressed hardly upon the pul- the pulse of the construction company. So mm-hmm. love to just get your thoughts around what's going on in that industry um, with COVID and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Right. Well, First on the people that we're seeing into this industry and something that the construction industry always expresses and you'll hear all the time is that we want more people in this industry and they they always are talking about it and it's kind of become like, okay, you want more people in this industry. Well, here we are. We have them and I have them. I see them every day and I talk to them every day and I'm like, okay, tell me what's going on. Um, If we just focus directly on the COVID situation uh, and what that looks like, you know, people are, are kind of uh, freaking out a little bit and they're not sure what they're going to do to earn money and to start a new career. And I have some conversations with some of the customers that I have and I, and I have to confirm with them um, for some of the en- um, entry level jobs, labor jobs that I have. And I say, uh, would, would you consider someone who is coming out of a different field, uh, nursing, caregiving, uh, people that uh, were in schools that can't work in schools, teachers, things like that. No, we can't. And so you kind of find it interesting that people often express that they want more people, but when it happens, they're not taking it. Yeah, so for somebody like myself that, uh, like I said, I I can hardly hammer a nail into the wall, for somebody like myself that doesn't um, have a good understanding of that industry, and obviously you do, why is that the case? Well, there's a standard in this industry. There is kind of a, um, you. there's terms that are used, but we'll, we'll keep it PG. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you kind of have to know your your strong suits, your work ethic one, and we you, my brand is around work ethic because that's how strongly most people in this industry feel. They want to know you can work, and and you'll hear from some contractors or superintendents or you know I've heard many times that they've considered people that don't know anything about it. I mean, fresh out of college or just fresh out of school, high school, but they can't put the work in the work ethic is different versus when our parents were working back then Mm -hmm. versus now and so um the the standards are all over the place um but and that's because this generation that we're seeing today is uh the the type of work is much different and uh that definitely brings some challenges and 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 i think some of the people that apply into some of these jobs i just i think that they're searching for anything and um they may not know the scope of work or the type of um the the work that goes into it so they may end up think if they get a job they may end up thinking well what is this job going to be and so there's always going to be these challenges but that's why hard hats needs to be able to target people that are already in this industry that are qualified and are dedicated so that we can funnel them back into the workforce specifically when they experience downtime and that downtime means weather storms bids uh, or uh, permits that don't go through. Um, there, there's so many driving factors to downtime that can put a project out for a few days, if not a few months. We need to be able to take those guys and give contractors an opportunity to lend out their crew during this downtime in addition. And that's really our long-term plan, but I want to tell you all my secrets. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, because, you know, I don't want to get everyone excited here, but, uh, you know, the industry is, I know they're keeping a close pulse and watch and what I'm doing because I, I've done something very different. Long-term, we have big plans. And if, if I had more opportunities and more support, I mean, like, real, real support. I'm not talking... You know, all the support's great, but I would love some real 
juicy, you know, big company back in hard hats because we're doing something great and we could use it. Let the record show that when she asked for real support, she looked at me and then said, juicy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not sure what that what that means. Hey, but <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm just trying to make it fun so people are listening in on us today. That's right. yeah. They're watching, too. I know. Oh, yeah. are, is the cameras here? Yeah, oh, yeah, I had no, you, you guys didn't tell me. Well, hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> she would have been looking into the camera the whole time if we'd let her know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that what you're doing is is certainly revolutionary. And, you know, what you just went over actually kind of lets us know that, that stereotypes continue to, to prevail, right? Stereotypes that women can't work in construction, stereotypes that millennials today don't have a work ethic, you know, and, and, and some of that is true, right? There's some truth in all stereotypes, of course, but just because somebody's 18 today or 22 today or 21 today doesn't mean that they don't know how to work, right? And, right. and we've got to be able to get past that. And, you know, you've got a solution for that. You've also got a solution for, like you said, lending a crew to somebody else when there's downtime at their current employer. And I think that that's a very innovative way to look at things because mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, coming from a construction family, my dad worked 18 hours a day in the summer and didn't work a lot in the, in the winter. Right. And, and right. You know, that was outside of Salt Lake city, Utah. And so, you know, there, there was snow for weeks and he couldn't work or there was, you know, big visqueen over the, scaffolding and heaters mm -hmm. to try to keep it warm enough to be able to stucco a building. And so I think that what you what you're on to here is obviously very innovative. Right. Definitely a startup as we know. So, you know, with startups you're always raising capital. So tell us what you're doing there and some of the challenges that you've that you've had as a female raising capital and being a female founder. Yeah. Well, let's be real for just a second. Let's um, we're all well aware of the challenges that we're all facing today in America, the world. I never thought in a million years that I would be raising capital during a pandemic, uh, a race war, um, pro, you know, the, you name it, we can go on, we're not gonna tap into it, but, and trying to uh, explain to investors that actually construction is one of the industries outside of healthcare that is still thriving. And that is something that anyone needs to know. We're going to face some challenges due to materials, uh, things being you know, shipped back and forth. There's going to be a little bit of effect in, in the industry temporarily, but we will come out of this in 2021. Residential commercial is going to still do really great. Federal projects, highway projects, we're still going to see a great economy after this. I truly believe that. Um, Raising capital, um, you know, I'm, I'm raising about $200,000 right now, and um, I'm constantly pitching to uh, startup uh, opportunities. I'm actually uh, competing in the CMEX Ventures. That's a global um, competition. It's the biggest aggregate uh, company, CMEX. So, uh, yeah, they, they have this big competition. So I'm looking forward to... Um, get my foot in that I'm already submitted and so any competition anything I can get grants free money um you know we, we're in traction we're we're you know I just got a call from Auckland today Oakland construction so that alone um is really showing some great validation and yeah. um people are asking questions yeah that's a much larger commercial contractor than people realize yeah. Oh yeah, and you know when I it's always, I always try to feel surprised when when I get these conversations, um, but I'm not surprised. And and the, the this industry is itching and hurting for something, and I can definitely say that it's giving me some advantage because I know how to talk to these guys, and I keep it real with them all day, every day. Workers. PM, supers, contractors, all my dad's customers, and they appreciate that a lot. And so um, that has given me a great opportunity to serve this industry in Arizona, and I'd like to expand. We have expanded, but really expand into our non-union states, of course, staying away from California. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not blame you there. <laughs> Nor do I, I being a California boy, yeah. so you're, well, you're good. I lived there for a long time, too, and I have a lot of family that still lives there, and... and uh, I have owned a business in California, so I understand the frustrations. <laughs> so let's take a quick break and hear, hear another word from our sponsor, and then we got a couple more questions for you if you're if you're uh, willing to stay. Okay. 
Whether you're an established local company or a brand new startup, you can count on GBS to be part of your family. We're not just any benefits consulting firm, we're GBS. We have nearly 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong sense of purpose, and it shows. GBS, believe in something better. GBSbenefits.com. All right, we're back. So Landon, uh, I think you're up for the next question. What do you think? All right, I think I can handle that. So um, you, you've talked a lot about the human side of your business. Um, I'm excited. Our listeners will be excited. Austin will be excited. We're all going to be excited. We want to hear about technology. So tell us about how you're weaving technology into uh, your company. And um, I think you might have some future plans for your app. So love to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, technology is something that I really enjoy um, because you can be very creative with it and, and build your idea around some, you know, a piece of technology that can really do all the work for you. Um, we're currently at a um, an early on stage. So as we raise capital, we then build into our app a little bit more heavier and, and automate more. Uh, so we work uh, alongside with developers and, of course, Coplex, who um, assists us with our business development and um, automating the app specifically for the demand side, meaning customers. Um, and so we have this opportunity for contractors to post jobs and gigs into the platform. They can list up to one or five people that we can source out. So for example, if they need five laborers, we will then pre-interview and vet um, and rate these workers so that we can match them to companies effectively. So we were really becoming kind of their HR assistant at a very fair cost and um, provide provides lots of value just for what they're uh, paying for. We have a large network of reaching 20,000 people. And so I've kind of utilized uh, our social platforms to get jobs out to people where they are every day versus them just sitting at a job board, which is still a great um, thing to use. But we think it's important to um, bring more awareness to the jobs that are available in construction and really aggressively put them out there for people to see. Um, so in, in addition to that, and that's currently what we're doing, um, long term outside of our technology, once we build a true, true marketplace opportunity, um, we want to be able to have this platform that provides a free place to post jobs, just always jobs no matter what for anyone. And then we can also provide um, a gig opportunity short term for workers when they experience that downtime. Um, so we can get some money in their pocket. We'll provide the insurance and that transaction through the app. But then in addition, we're going to have, uh, say we have ABC contracting that has a crew of 10 guys that specialize in a specific trade and a skill like concrete. We want to be able to list that crew and an asking price basically where XYZ contracting can come in and say, all right, these guys are down for two weeks. We're going to bring them on our project. We're going to relieve my timeline, get some help on my project, and then they can go back to ABC contracting. And so we want to have this lending opportunity. Of course, there's going to be an agreement, a pretty heavy agreement in that. But instead of just looking into solutions that people are already doing, we're looking outside of those solutions. What can we do to bring relief now and in here on, because I feel that the industry is always going to be dealing with this problem, no matter what, no matter how hard the in, uh, um, Arizona or the country tries on workforce development, we're always going to see this little problem, the shortage, uh, talent, quality. So we need to figure out how we can utilize that that quality that's here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned shortage. So. Um, Talk to us for a couple minutes and tell us, you know, what what do you want to see from the industry? What do you need from your industry? What do you want to tell them about this labor shortage crisis? Because labor shortage <laughs> crisis, um, because it sounds like you're solving a problem. So what do you have to say to them? There's hope. And 
I think that we need to start looking at this problem, this crisis. I mean, you can Google it and you'll find stuff all about um, this problem and people trying to find solutions. And there are some great solutions, um, like apprenticeships that they provide through each and every state. Um, but what we need to do as an industry and a very close, tight um, uh, relationship between most contractors is come together and more resources and support the people who are really putting effort into this problem. Workforce development stuff is great. We got the apprenticeships down. I think we have that down really well. But there's much more that we can do and much more innovation and disruption that we can do. And a lot of people are working very hard on it. But we're counting on the veterans, the people who have been in this industry for years and years and decades to really get used to this innovation technology and learn to adapt. That's really important, um, I think, for finding relief in this industry. But even with hard hats, we want to be able to form the technology and our solution around how you operate and keeping it simple and personable and communicative between HR and your on-site professionals so that we're just overall, we have your back all the way around. And I think that um, will really significantly help the shortage. And I don't know if we mentioned or we got a chance to mention this, or I did. Um, I, my birthday was on Labor Day, so I, I think that the contractors out there should really take a look at you know this, this woman in this industry solving the labor shortage, and her birthday was <laughs> on Labor Day. You know, let's just consider that as like maybe this girl's got a couple good ideas and maybe she was supposed to come here and do this pieces are all coming together just saying you know that my family everything that's been hit on you know with everything that i'm doing think about it really yeah a amen sister amen no i think i think um one of the things that you said that uh, that uh, i'll hone in on a little bit is is you know you're talking about these veterans of the industry and these big companies that are out there and and I think what you hear a lot of times in big companies is, well, that's not the way we do it. We've never done it that way. Um, and I think that that's the worst thing that any company could say. I don't care what size the company is. No executive at a company should ever be saying, well, that's, that's just not the way we do it. We, we've always got to be looking at other ways to do things that are, that are more innovative. And you've brought us something today that is more innovative. So... One question for you that uh, that came of that is, you know, everybody talks about this being the gig economy, mm. right? And we've talked about you lending crews from one company to another and having the agreement to do that. But a, a lot of people want to just be one of those gig economy workers, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be just in tech, right? It can be mm -hmm. construction and not wanting to work for one company all the time, just wanting to be able to go out and do different jobs and work when they want to and how they want to. Do you see that as, as something you're doing here as well? I am. Um, one I, once I launched Hard Hats, I realized with, through some of the customer um, discovery interviews and questions that I had, um, and even the customers I have today, that not everybody's looking for a gig opportunity. I would say maybe two out of 10 uh, are looking for a short-term opportunity because they have a short-term job and they don't need somebody long-term. Um, I think that there's a lot of gig platforms specifically for construction that are weighing heavily just on that, but I don't feel that that's the overall solution. And um, as far as companies being used to the gig opportunity, um, I think is slowly making its way through to the industry. Um, but for them to resonate on that overall solution, I think is gonna really take some time. And um, at the end of the day, what this industry wants to see is people who wanna work, people that can work, that have the ability to work, and that wanna work their way up. And, and they, they care about the technology, but they wanna know that there's someone else behind the scenes really putting in that that extra work to find them that manpower. And so I think that's what this industry needs, of someone out there hustling and, and drawing in um, that, that talent pool um, and, and just bringing more of that human experience to uh, 
workers and contractors, and, and so far we're killing it. We're doing great. I, I'm loving the conversations that we're having. Um, they trust me, and um, yeah, so I think uh, outside of the gig, there's much more and many more plans that I have, um, but I need the capital to do it, and if I were to build the technology exactly how I wanted today, it would be marvelous. It yeah. would, I built an entire social job board that did a crap ton of stuff. I know that I can build something like this for this industry that will do everything they need and some. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've definitely got confidence in spades, and I think you've got a great <laughs> idea and, and some technology that's coming together, and you're certainly at the right place to be building this. I mean, we had Brenda Schmidt on a few weeks ago. Coplex is awesome. I think what they're doing for, for founders like yourself is just a fantastic, fantastic thing. And uh, we're, we're excited to actually see what things look like, and we'd love to have you back a, a year from now and see uh, what you've accomplished in a year and you know the money that you've raised and, and where you've taken this uh, to that point. So let's uh, give you the, the podium for the last few minutes. Tell us a little bit about how we can find you on social, how we can find you on, on the web, and, and what else, uh, whatever else you'd like our listeners to hear. Yes. So I am very active on social media. If anyone's watching, um, you should know that. I uh, am all about LinkedIn, so Cassidy Hazelton is my personal LinkedIn. Definitely jump on it. I'm always posting great stuff. Uh, the um, handler for our social pages is Hire Hard Hats, and also our website, same thing, www.hirehardhats.com. Um, if you're a company, just sign up as a company, and we'll be in touch with you shortly. And if you're a worker, um, same thing, sign up. Make sure you put your skill set in there, and if you can drop your resume, that would be great. And anything else aside from that, you can always email me. I'm always happy to take a call anytime with anyone um, at info at hirehardhats.com. Great. Well, Cassidy, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciated the conversation. I know our listeners appreciated it, and if, uh, if there's even just one person out there who's looking for a job or a company who realizes that there's the service that you're bringing to them, uh, then it was time well spent for all of us. So thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.